At what stage would Labour have withdrawn the whip from Michelle Moan? Well, I mean, we wouldn't have made Michelle Moan appear in the first place. There's a, there's a clear... Um, problem for the Conservative Party here, but it goes wider than just one person. There was a VIP express lane that was set up for PPE and huge amounts of money, um, billions of pounds wasted uh, because of that. And we yesterday set out that we would ban those VIP express lanes going forward. Rishi Sunak was the Chancellor who presided over all of this. But the more important problem for the country is he's not promising to clean it up now. It's within his gift to do so. And he should make sure this never happens again. We needed PPE really quickly. We certainly did. But one of the reasons that we needed PPE really quickly is because the government had... Uh, pandemic plan that they didn't appear to know about. They hadn't done any of the drills for several years. The, um, the equipment supplies that they were meant to keep as part of that had been severely depleted under the Cameron government. And when the pandemic hit, they were completely unprepared. There were other countries in the world who'd borrowed our pandemic plan, like Singapore, who implemented it and did significantly better than Britain. And we were left scrambling around with emergency workers having to source their own because the government just wasn't prepared. So Labour, one of the first things they would do, even when they come into power, is to make sure that there's a plan in place? Absolutely. Not just having a plan in place, because there was a plan, but that we were following that plan and that we're ready for emergencies. In Wigan, as you know well, Kay, my own local authority and public health director were far better prepared than their government and our hospital trust managed to source PPE far quicker than the government and they did it in a sensible way without wasting lots of money. They managed to get PPE that actually worked rather than having this bonfire of PPE afterwards, uh, watching not just PPE supplies that were faulty go up in smoke but a lot of taxpayers' money at a time when we don't have a lot of it. Talk about Wigan. I mean, would you um, would you be happy to have wind farms, onshore wind farms in Wigan? We, we absolutely would. And in fact, I was in Lee, just next door, um, last Friday night with uh, a public meeting with people asking me why we aren't able to build more onshore wind farms. People saying we want to set up renewable industries across the northwest. We want to get cheaper access to energy. We want to create new jobs. And yet we've had an effective ban on them for seven years. The government is now moving slightly under pressure from their own backbenchers, but the truth is it's chaos. They're being buffeted one way by backbenchers on house building, another way on onshore wind. They don't know what they're doing from one day to the next, and as a consequence, communities can't plan either. They do know that there's a lot of challenges as far as strikes are concerned. I had Steve Barclay sat there in the last hour and he says his door's always open. What more can he do? Oh, well, <laughs> his door's always open. It sounds like he's got no agency himself. If we were in government, we'd be moving heaven and earth to avoid these strikes. It's what the ambulance workers want. It's what the call handlers want. They don't want to be on strike. They need him to step up and do his job and get involved in the negotiations well, so do? they can go you back to doing theirs. Well, he should go and talk to them. I mean, what, you know, what what does he think his actual job is? He hasn't spent a single second in negotiations since this started. And he's got ambulance workers saying we don't want to go on strike. These strikes can be avoided. Even now, they can be avoided if he actually did his job. The problem in this country isn't a militant workforce. It's a militant government. Um, it's not just the ambulance drivers, of course. I mean, th there are significant numbers of unions that are planning to go out on strike. You recently said that we, we can't afford inflation-busting pay rises. No, I, I said if they're unaffordable, it's because the government has crashed the economy. But the truth is that this country does need a pay rise, and the government knows that. Privately, they completely accept it. But uh, inflation-busting? No, uh, inflation-busting is is a phrase that is used to try to disguise the fact that there are a lot of people now, firefighters, ambulance workers, who haven't had a proper pay increase for 12 years of Tory government and now are being asked to go out and care for our families when they can't afford to feed their own. Over it's unsustainable. Look, the, the point is this. This is a really difficult situation because for 12 years we've had very little economic growth. The Tories have crashed the economy in the last few months and left working people paying the price. But if you don't get money back into people's pockets who care for our families and run our public services and work every single day to keep this country going, you can't rebuild local economies, you can't get economic growth, businesses can't thrive. And so the government has got to sit down with the frontline workforce that only two years ago they were clapping for and calling heroes and try and work this out. Now, I don't know if you're much of a royalist or not, but how much sympathy have you got for the King at the moment, given what's happening the other side of the pond? 
I've got a lot of sympathy, actually, for the whole royal family. I, you know, families are complicated, they're difficult. I know that myself. And it's not easy when you're um, going through what this family is going through. Actually, my heart goes out to all of them. I think watching all of that playing out through the national newspapers must be pretty desperate for everybody involved. Yeah, but sh should you really be doing Netflix documentaries about... I mean, you wouldn't do a Netflix documentary about your family. I'm sure it would be a good watch. <laughs> I'm sure <it> would not. <laughs> I hope they won't either. <laughs> you get my point, though. I, 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 mean, I do, but, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, nobody ever knows what really goes on in families if you're not part of it. And there's always about 20 different versions, as I know myself. The, you know, the, the, you've got Harry and Meghan saying that the, there's, there's briefing and there's leaking going on, which must be pretty brutal if it's true. You've got... You know, the other side of the family saying, well, it's, it's not right to do Netflix documentaries, which, you know, pretty brutal if it's true. I, I'm not in a position to comment. I don't think anybody really yeah. in this country is. Yeah. The Nandies, a blockbuster <laughs> series coming to a screen <laughs> near you. I really hope not. <laughs> it's good to see you as always. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you.